God does not want me to be proud. And God's will revealed for my character is this. Back to chapter 16 and verse 18 in the book of Proverbs. And I want to encourage you again. I'm actually doing for you right now one of the devotional studies that you could do. I, I just gave you all of the verses. You, you can do a topical study of pride and, and just of the word pride. And, and what I'm doing for you is I'm showing you how to apply these precious verses. So as an encouragement, those of you that want to get the full benefit of this course, you need to start a devotional journal like is in uh, what I call the film zero. Uh, there are 10 classes, but there's one. The very first one in the playlist is a zero. That's a preparatory one. And that one is all about how to do the devotional journal. And for those of you taking this for credit, you have to do it, so why not make the most of it? And what you do is perhaps even what I'm showing you here and enlarge on it in your journal. But look at 1618 again. Again, it should be marked in your Bible. And if you have an electronic Bible, you know, you can get that highlighter in there. And so it jumps out at you. But pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Now look at the slide. God wants to make me humble, not proud. Now look at what it says at the bottom of the slide. There are nine manifestations of pride described in Proverbs. Next slide, look at this. Manifestations of pride. How do we know we're proud? Well, let me go through these one at a time with you and we'll, we'll read the verses together and I want you to just underline this in your minds, okay? Number one, Proverbs says that that when we're proud, we become deceitful, we cover our sins, we hide our faults and mistakes. Now here are the two verses to read in Proverbs 11.2. When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. Wow. When we're proud, we don't want anybody to know our weaknesses, we don't want anybody to know our mistakes, but yet what does the Bible say? that Christians are to be characterized by. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. We're supposed to be sharing our burdens, weaknesses, and needs with other believers so that they can encourage us. Hebrews chapter 10 says the primary purpose of gathering in fellowship with other believers is to exhort one another as we anticipate the return of Christ. And how do we exhort? We say, pray for me. I'm, I'm struggling at work. Pray for me. I'm struggling, you know, in this relationship or in my role as a father or a husband or a wife or a mother or a child to my parents. And I need prayer. That, that's an evidence, look, of humility. See, pride says, I don't want anybody to know that I'm imperfect. Now, we all know we're all imperfect. But our pride that we're hardwired with from birth always makes us want to be like Satan. And that is to be full of ourselves and haughty and proud and saying, I will and I want my way. God says, no, humble yourself, be submissive to me. And wisdom teaches you, number one, to not be deceitful. Now that slide, look at number two. When I'm proud, I don't have close relationships. This is what it says in, in Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. So he, he doesn't want wise people around him, you know, critiquing his life and helping him get uh, better. No, he rages against that. Verse 2, a fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. So a manifestation of pride, number one, is being deceitful. Number two is having no close relationships. We don't have anybody close to us. Now, remember what the book of 1 John says. 1 John 1 says, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with people around us. What does that mean? We're all open. We're all seeing each other in the light, the light of God's word, the light of God, uh, through his spirit shining down, illumining us. And therefore we have fellowship, partnership in Christ. Okay, number three, Proverbs 10, 17 says that another manifestation of pride 
that, that goes before destruction and, and it's part of a haughty spirit before a fall is this. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. A lack of admitting when we're wrong. Now, one of the greatest things to do is to quickly confess and forsake sin. Spiritually, we're supposed to be constantly, as soon as we're aware that we have disobeyed God, fallen uh, short of his standard, we're supposed to be confessing our sins. If we're very quick to confess to God, we're very quick to confess to those around us. Because confession to God is a humbling thing. It's a submissive thing. It's saying, I'm helpless. I need your help. You have died in my place, and thank you for, for already forgiving my sins. Now cleanse me from the effect of that sin. That's what 1 John talks about. Verse, chapter 1, verse 9. Okay, let's keep going. The next one, number four in our slide is, an evidence of pride is a person that Proverbs 10, 19 says this about, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his, lip is wa- his lips is wise. So a foolish person talks all the time. But a wise person restrains their lips. Talking too much is one of the evidences of foolishness, not wisdom. Remember it says a wise man holds his tongue and everybody thinks he's really wise and smart. But a fool just spouts out. And, and one of the ways that, that God says we grow in wisdom is just learning, as it says in the book of Psalms, to set a watch at the door of our mouth, to, to put a gate there and say, I'm not going to speak until I've paused to think what is a wise and godly thing to say. Do you remember those WWJD bracelets people used to wear? This isn't one. This is to remind me that at my old age, taking blood thinners, I bleed a lot. But I remember those WWJD bracelets, and what it is is, what would Jesus do? How about WWJS? What would Jesus say? See, that's what wisdom tells us. Number five is is kind of connected to number four, talking too much about yourself. Proverbs 27.2 says, let another man praise you, not your own mouth, a stranger, not your own lips. Number six, uh, another word from the Lord in in wisdom about how to avoid pride is, it says in Proverbs 13, 1, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Do you know number six, uh, an evidence of pride is being devastated or angered by criticism. One of the wisest things I ever heard was a person I deeply admired, a, a spiritual leader, I used to see them facing criticism, attack, uh, people angry at them. And and I used to watch them and they would stand up in public meetings and they would have their Bible and they would stand and you could tell whoever was talking, they would look at them and they they wouldn't say a word, they'd look at them and and there, there was just a tranquility about them which was hard to understand. And they'd look at them and wait till the person was completely done with whatever they were accusing or saying. And then they'd, they always said the same, they'd go, thank you. And afterward, uh, one of these meetings, I said, how do you act that way? They said, well, in every criticism, there's always a grain of truth. And I'm always standing there trying to have the Lord help me to sift through everything they're saying and find that grain of truth. What does Proverbs 13.1 say? A wise son heeds his father's instruction. There are times when we as, as children don't like to hear what our parents say, but a wise son sifts through. A wise person sifts through instruction and criticism and seeks to find that grain of truth and say thank you. Because if you, if you listen long enough to your critics, to those attacking, they will say something 
that is that grain of truth. As I heard when I was at Dallas Seminary, even a broken clock is right once a day. So even a horribly motivated critic will have some grain of truth. Okay, number seven in your slides, the, the seventh manifestation of pride is being unteachable. Proverbs 19.20 says, listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise in your later days. It's tied to the last one, but what it is is, it's, it's not just thinking of the moment. Being teachable means I'm thinking of the rest of my life. When a person is criticizing something now, it probably has nothing to do with me right now. But another grain of truth is, you know, that's something I should look for in the future. And a proud person is unteachable. You can't share anything with them. They go, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, huh, come. No. A humble person that's living life God's way, that has wisdom from above, do you know what it says in James 3, 17? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, then gentle, then easily entreated. That means you can reason with them and say, what you're doing troubles me. And you say, I don't want to trouble you. I want to listen to you. I want to know how to, to live in peace. As Paul said, as much as lies within us, we live at peace with one another. And that's the opposite of number seven, being unteachable. Number eight is being sarcastic, hurtful, or degrading. Two Proverbs, 12, 18 says, there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Then verse 23, a prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of a fool proclaims foolishness. Now, Sarcastic? Have you ever heard the word sarcastic? That, that word, sarx, is the Greek word for flesh, and it speaks of someone whose words kind of go like harpoons or like hooks into someone's flesh. It's actually attacking, you know what they call it, ad hominem attacks. Ad is toward hominem the man. It's toward the person. You're attacking the person. It's not like you're presenting a truth for consideration. It is attacking being sarcastic, being hurtful, degrading people is not Christ-like. What, what did Peter say about Jesus when he was reviled? He didn't revile again. What did Jesus' enemies say about him? When he spoke, he spoke like no one ever spoke before. They, they, they came to arrest him and they couldn't because his words were so gracious. What does Paul tell us? Let your words be seasoned with salt and graced by the Spirit of God, not sarcastic. A proud person is sarcastic, hurtful, or degrading, and they're headed toward destruction, and it's a reflection of haughtiness. Here's the last one, the ninth manifestation of pride, and it's chapter 12, verse 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Boy, that's blunt. Being defensive or blame-shifting. And that is where our culture is. Everyone is a victim in American culture today. And they shift the blame for their behavior onto where they live or who raised them or their lack of this or that. And the Bible says, no, if you love instruction, you love knowledge. But if you hate and deflect and are defensive and fight back when someone is pointing out some weakness or error or mistake you've made, whether correctly or incorrectly, but when we're defensive and blame shifting, we're headed toward destruction, God says, and we're not wise. Okay, let's go to the next slide. How do we cure the my way pride problem? Now remember, Isaiah 53 and verse 6 says, all of us at birth... All we, like sheep, have gone astray. But what is the essence of what's wrong with us at birth? We have turned everyone, what? To our own way. 